The ancients used the void to achieve immortality while sacrificing their living forms. Their inability to procreate has resulted in their numbers dwindling over the last 500 years, but they sure do know how to plant some trees. No, but seriously, I have a lot of trees. If you need any, let me know. Hey everybody, Weem here. Welcome back to Odd Realm. If you are enjoying my videos, please do click the subscribe button and especially you'd be doing me a huge favor if you clicked the bell icon for notifications. In case you didn't know, in 2020 I'm turning off all video ads here, so I'm going ad free. So again, you'd just be doing a huge favor in supporting my channel by clicking that bell icon. So let's talk about the Ancients. This is actually a really cool race. I was, felt kind of confused when I first jumped into them, but I've gotten to know them a lot better. And I thought, you know what, if I had a little bit of confusion, kind of curious how these guys operated, there could be others out there who might be interested in knowing a bit more about them. So one of the first things I want to talk about is the differences... Uh, between some of the types that we see. We've got a number of characters running around here. Now, what you're largely seeing, these are called the Void Woken. So I'm going to take one quick step back and say that the Ancients are the primary race here, and these are creatures that they summon. So when you start a game in kind of the normal mode, you actually have two characters. I'll open up the entities, and I'll scroll down here, and you can see I have Orax the Killer, and he's a summoner. And then I've got the guy here who's a mage, Beovax. So those are my two ancients. Everything else here has been summoned, and these are the names they just naturally uh, were given to them, or randomly as it may be. Um, we've got a lot of what's called the Woken, that's one type you can summon. And then there are imps, and I've got a few of these here, and you can see their names. Uh, Wee Daddy and Wee Ripper is kind of funny, it's almost Weem. <laughs> so again, you've kind of got the two ancients here, and then you have the two types of creatures they can summon, the Woken and the imps. I've kind of hopped down here to part of my tree farm. I've got a lot of trees growing all over the place, but you could see a number of Woken kind of wandering around. These guys kind of float about the place. I'm going to actually go ahead and pause this and mouse over this guy. Now, the guys you see running here on the two legs, we've got basically uh, the imps. And again, like I said, the Woken actually kind of float above the ground here. A little hard to see with the pixel graphics. It's only a, a small number of pixels make up these characters. But you can see the difference there between the uh, Imp and the Woken. So the Woken themselves, let me open the Entities screen here. Woken can do pretty much anything. If I jump into permissions, you'll kind of see what I'm saying here. We've got all of these different Woken, and they've got like everything turned on. They can kind of do most of this stuff. And they do it well. They'll kind of run around and do everything. And then you can see the difference here. We have Imps. Imps can actually just carry. Uh, they, get, they have the fighting and the mining here. This is kind of their jam, basically. This is what they will do uh, best. And so that's kind of the difference between these two. You got the worker bees, and then I consider these kind of the protection. <laughs> so, uh, and then we've got our other ancients, the two ancients who kind of run around and, and create some of the rooms and summon more of these guys as need be. You get the idea. That's kind of the difference between the three uh, variations uh, the, of the entities here. Now here I have uh, highlighted, <laughs> I've highlighted Orax, the killer. He actually went downstairs. If I come down here, this is all for storage of wood. So yeah, I need a lot of it. So you can see Orax has gone down there, probably delivered some wood. He's coming back up to the surface. But I have him selected as one of the ancients because we're going to go ahead and start with them. Now, what's interesting about the ancients is they can only... Um, occupy one of four professions. If I jump in here and mouse over this guy, you'll see he is a summoner. The other one is a mage. There's actually two more classes, the arcanist and the thaumaturge. So the arcanist is good at summoning and void construction. The mage that we've got here is actually really good with fighting with magic. I got in a fight once and he kind of ran within a certain amount of range and started casting spells. Uh, really good damage there. It seemed really awesome to have. Orax is the summoner. Well, you can imagine he's actually good at summoning stronger, more efficient minions. And then the Thaumaturge is good with construction um, with the Void. Um, so anything kind of construction related around the Void. Now, I'm mentioning the Void. You may be wondering, well, what's the Void? <laughs> so there are these Void Crystals. And there's actually, um, I kind of call these the important resources of the Ancients. And those are void shards um, and those can be found by mining and everything they're kind of uh, small purple specks it's not these but um, you'll find those in various uh, areas in different ways um, there's crystals and those can actually be used to create void cells which will power some of your unique rooms if I come down here I'm gonna go ahead and click the room 
uh, guy here. So we can see when we mouse over, we have an immortality tomb. We got the summoning chamber, the farsight beacon, the empty chaos, or the the empty, <laughs> the chaos construction here. So these are these are four of the um, unique rooms to these guys as well. So crystals are used again to create void cells, which power some of these rooms. So the crystals are important. Shards were the first ones I mentioned, and they actually ten of those can create a crystal. So you can take ten shards, make one crystal, use that to make a cell to power a room. Oh, we just switched into summer. The next kind of, um, I'm going to call this one a resource. I, I kind of see it as a resource, I suppose. Um, it's basically a unique uh, item type for them. Is a stasis crystal. What is a stasis crystal? Now, I'm going to actually bring up my entities here. And right now, we just have two ancients, right? We have Orax and we have Beovax. But if you find these stasis crystals, they actually have sleeping ancients inside of them. They'll have one. I'm going to kind of scroll down here while I explain this. Um, so basically those can be looted and they will open up to kind of awaken um, an ancient. So I actually was doing some mining down here and ran across this room. This was all red. I couldn't dig through the wall. I was like, how do I get in here? So when I got over to this point here, I'll actually kind of zoom this in a bit. I came over and I said, well, let me dig up. I dug up and was like, oh, I could go over the wall and then hop down into the room. And there was a stasis crystal right here. As soon as I looted it, ancient popped out. He had some text. He said, oh, hey, what's going on? And he joined. Now, I had since lost one of my ancients. Um, I don't know if it was the new one that died. I don't quite recall. But I did have three for a little bit. <laughs> and additionally, you can see there is actually a void cell here. So I can actually break that down. I forgot what a void cell breaks down into. We might get a crystal from it. I'm not sure. Maybe just some shards. But um, these are the kind of rooms that you can find. And in some cases, you'll find these, uh, again, stasis crystals to add more ancients to your team. The final resource I want to talk about of these four um, important resources to the ancients is the arcane dust. Now, arcane dust is used to create the imps, which again, if I bring this up, I've got all of my woken and then I've got three or I had three I'm now down to two imps. So I could I can summon another one. In fact, I should have that automated at this point. So one of the ancients will uh, Orax will probably go summon another imp at, at some point. But anyway, again, the arcane dust is used uh, for them. And, and to create arcane dust, you just need four bones and a void shard. I just had the bell ring, so I noticed uh, my imp has come out of the oven. So we've got another one. We, we're back to three here again. And I had mentioned that this was kind of automated. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring up the workstations because I do want to talk about the rooms. And I want to show you... Um, basically where this is happening at. So if I go to the summoning chamber, you can see that we can summon a Woken here for four shards, or we can summon an Imp for four Arcane Dust. They both require the same skill, the evocation. Our summoner can do those for us. And as you can see over here, I've actually set this so that if I fall under 10 Woken, uh, they will summon more until I hit that number again. And if I fall under three imps, I drop to two, they will automatically summon another one. So that's why that actually happened pretty quickly uh, that they popped another one out there. I may actually increase these numbers more uh, because I am getting more void shards. Up here in the left, you can see that I have currently have 35. I have seven crystals, which is pretty good. I know I mentioned I had a lot of wood before and 485 probably doesn't seem like that much wood except it's actually 4,859 <laughs> and I still have um, uh, well I did I guess they kind of cleaned up the tree so we're at about 4,000 which I do have plenty of storage for down here but anyway that's besides the fact I just have so many people running around I've been planting so many trees that that's a given I know at the beginning I said they're really good at planting trees but they're no better at planting trees than anybody else <laughs> Okay, let's talk a bit more about the rooms. So they've got, the ancients have a number of unique rooms and they all serve obviously uh, very specific purposes. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through those really quick. We have the chaos construct and that is basically a room that unlocks additional blueprints. More specifically, it's spell books that, um, I think it's the imps use them. It's, po it's possible that the um, ancients use them but um, you can't give them to the Woken as far as I recall. Um, let's see, let's just open up a Woken here and go to inventory. I don't know, I do have a spellbook extra here. Yeah, so um, he can't use that one. Um, but if we go to the Imp, 
I, I can't remember. Can they use these? No. Okay, so it, it's just the ancients. And if I go to Orax, you can see he actually has the book on here. Again, the imps do use um, the fighting magic and everything, but it seems they don't use these books. So again, that is more specifically uh, what is created out of the, um, the chaos construct. Now, it's entirely possible I haven't played far enough and that there's actually more than those things to create. Um, if I actually jump into here... Here's the things. This is where you also make the arcane dust from bone and uh, shard. And then the uh, two spell books. It's possible there could be more here. And I just haven't played far enough yet to unlock these. I'm not sure. But that's what's here right now. Here we have the immortality tome. And this is basically at the opening I talked about uh, that your ancients need to rest. More specifically, it's just our two ancients that I have right now. They need rest. Um, they will burn through their energy if I bring this up here. Um, and go to overview you can see that we've got let's see can I sort this yeah we've got Orax here and he has uh, 1579 out of 5000 now when he gets low enough he's gonna want to rest and he will go to the immortality chamber uh, to get that rest <laughs> if he doesn't have it he gets what they call the void sickness he can eventually die that would be bad because we really need those guys to be summoning more if I lost him I'd be super boned. So anyway, this is a pretty important room to have. The next room I want to talk about is um, this guy here. And we've got, um, actually, let me kind of indicate this down here. We've got the summoning chamber. Um, and that, well, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> we we could probably guess what the summoning chamber is. Yes, it is used to summon Woken and the Void Imps. Um, I had talked about the resources before, and this is one of those rooms that uses the Void Crystal. Um, which we can see, or the void cell, the crystal is used to make the cell. This has a void cell. We've got a void cell here, here. You can see these um, in here. So obviously this is where we uh, summon the uh, the two types, the uh, imp and the woken. Finally up here in this corner, we have the, what's the room called? It's called the Farsight Beacon that I stuck in here. And this actually indicates on the map where you might find like void crystals and things like that. So as I recall, I think it jumped down somewhere and it did a crystal kind of glowing effect in an area. And I was like, oh, okay, let me mine towards that. And I'm pretty sure if I recall correctly, that that's how I found this room. There was some indicator up here and I said, oh, cool. Let me mine up here. And there you go. Found those resources. Pretty sweet. Okay, for the next two rooms I want to talk about, I kind of have to come back up to the surface because I had made the shelter for the next two rooms. We've got a transmutation transmutation <laughs> chamber. Try that again, Ween. And a retrograde, retrograde, boy, I can't say anything today. A retrograde arcanum. I can get it out. So the retrograde building here, this is all about um, turning void shards into void crystals. Um, and basically... Um, actually, you know what? It's probably easiest just to show you the uh, that room in here. If we jump into here, um, and we have the whoa, 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 here we go. We have void crystals, it takes 10 shards. That's what that room is all about. Pretty straightforward. Uh, the other one here, the transmutation chamber, this actually turns some simple items into uh, shards, and that's another one we can look at as well. Uh, again, remind myself. Right, transmutation, um, is that down at the bottom? Yes. So here you can see that for five logs, um, we can actually get a uh, void shard. Um, obviously for 10 stone chunks, we have some plant fiber. I don't have enough rotten food, um, which actually this shouldn't be a problem. If I was making food, because, because the ancients don't need to eat, I should be able to get rotten food, but... Um, I'm not really making a lot of food since I don't need it. <laughs> and then we have Dirt Clawed. You can see I set some minimums here because I have so much wood. I said, you know, if I fall below uh, 50 of these shards, let's keep those going. I mean, currently, it's got we've got 35. But um, anyway, you get the idea there. This room is pretty important in the beginning because while you can find shards about the world, and if you're like digging through stone, there's a chance that they'll pop out. It's nice to have this building kind of early on. Uh, so that you can very easily, from some of these simple items, begin generating shards, just in case you have a hard time finding them. I did have a map where I just seemed to have less luck with those things. So I did think about these buildings as well, and kind of the order of things. I did a playthrough briefly uh, prior to this, where I didn't 
I kind of burned through my crystals accidentally. I was I spent shards and everything to make um, to make these guys here the void cells. Then I broke them down because I wanted to move them, thinking that I would get exactly this back when I didn't. And I found myself in a position where I was just hunting crystals down. So basically, the way I kind of do things now, at least with these guys, I think. Uh, the way I kind of did it this time around was that I'd made the summoning chamber right away because I need my guys out here gathering and, and looking for things and doing the jobs I need them to do. Next, I made the transmutation chamber, which allows me to, again, convert the simple stuff into the crystal shards. That way I knew, okay, cool, I'm getting, sh I'm getting the shards, which 10 of them make a crystal. Perfect. And then I did the retrograde arcanum after that, which allowed me to turn the void shards into void crystals um, so anyway i, I kind of wanted that system going to get those to make sure i didn't run out of them i want to do a quick uh, correction here a little note because some of you may have noticed when i actually went in to um, show you that i could make these uh, and i saw that this was 35 and i mentioned oh they'll probably get it up to 50 uh, I was realizing, like, they should already be getting that up to 50. What's the delay here? And you can see it's now moving up. We're at 36. Well, anyway, I, I didn't quite realize that there was a red marker in, around here because they they had been making these fine. But the red marker indicated that uh, they didn't have anybody with that skill. So for some reason, this got turned off, this void work um, for both of these guys. It was off. So I don't know why <laughs> I didn't turn it off. So I'm not sure what changed there. But anyway, I just turned that back on and we can see the numbers coming back up now. So if you were wondering about that, that's why that occurred. Um, so anyway, we're back in business. We're kind of getting through some some uh, shard creation there. Obviously, we got a bunch of trees in here. I could give you the quick um, the quick tour. This was where I started. I actually did a farm. I built walls around here initially. I wanted to actually build mostly on the surface this time because previous playthroughs and experimenting, I just kind of kept going underground, which obviously you do in games like this. I'm still going to have underground rooms and everything, but I thought I would do some kind of buildings up top. So that's worked out pretty well. I actually did some leveling of the terrain. I actually dug terrain out here, used that dirt to kind of stack this out. So this is raised up um, a couple layers, which they can climb a little slow. But anyway, this is all basically for tree planting right here. And... Um, you know the, the regular farm here a lot of this was for wood until I, I dug these two holes down <laughs> for wood storage in here and just said let me just dump a ton of crates in here we can actually hit this and you can see just how full these are this indicates it's full these are partially these are pretty low so you can see that uh, we've got you know almost 5,000 wood and we're not even quite using half of all of this so yeah, I think that some of the, these were dedicated to logs. I could probably use these for other things, but anyway, that's where it's at. I've got a little roof over the, the well, I'll call it, and I put a hatch on there. This is kind of what goes down, 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 down underground. Now, like I, I, I like to do in Dwarf Fortress, and I decided to do this time as well. I, I come down to a certain point, and then I say, you know, I could run into something really dangerous. So instead of going straight all the way down, I'll do like a U-shape and put two doors. And then I will continue in kind of a you know a, a hole going down near the other one so basically when they hit this level they just run through two doors and keep going down that means i get some indication if something's coming up it's got to kind of be banging on the door and kind of tearing trying to get through this so i just i just use these as like a little safety measure i suppose so anyway that is a very quick look at the ancients and odd realm i'm actually really enjoying them i thought i wouldn't be that into them i was like i don't know summoning and i just i don't know but let me dive in and just see how they work and now they're quickly becoming kind of my favorite there are three other races there's the human and humans and the ancients those are playable there's three unplayable races right now i'm very curious to see how those turn out i'll probably cover those when they eventually do release pretty excited to check that out but anyway really enjoying these guys and I thought because I had a lot of questions and I'm still learning but I think I kind of knew enough to introduce uh, you to the ancients in case you have not tried them or you've been curious what they're all about um, I just think it's kind of a cool dynamic that you've got you know a couple ancients um, who then summon a bunch of these creatures to do these tasks for you or be your protection for example kind of cool kind of a cool little setup so i know it's going to change over time the game is still kind of regularly being developed so there could be some changes coming to this who knows but so far i'm really enjoying it i really hope you did and if you do like i said hit the subscribe button click the bell especially if you'd like to see more from me i really would appreciate that otherwise i do want to thank you guys for stopping by as always i appreciate it and i will catch you next time